Oh yeah, I, I steal all the loot. There must be friendly fire, right? Yes. Okay. You should try on sips though, just to no, make sure. No, don't do it. <laughs> the first time we played this, Mal shot me with a shotgun, and I had to use up all my stims. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the start of the map. Mm, I don't think so. Oh, I see. Oh, dude, you can have like an outline around your uh, players. Yes. Yeah, that's it so show... nice. You know who yeah. you you can see who your teammates are, so you don't riddle them with bullets. Not ninety percent of your comms doesn't have to be. Is this you? Is this you? Mm -hmm. Jump you twice. Mean, so you, are you, you walking jump? on metal? Why did you kill me? You didn't jump. And there's a lumber mill in this game too, Ryan. So if you play this with Dan, um, he might shoot you in the back of the head. Well, that would require Dan to uh, beat Elden Ring, so I'm not too worried about that uh, for the time <laughs> being. Has that guy played any other game in 2022 so far? Um, like he's been on that for months, right? He's played a little bit of 20 minutes till dawn as like a tolerance yeah. break. He still thinks he's going to beat Elden Ring before the Cuphead DLC comes out, but I'm pretty sure it comes out on like... It's the end of this month or next month? Or well, yeah, it did, today's like the 29th. <laughs> <laughs> comes out tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Okay, Sips is on the inside, so we can, yeah, we can get in here. I thought I was danger. following uh, Sips like literally the whole oh, time. Oh, I mean, I think, yeah, it's been totally looted up here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this is the... Looks like somebody door... beat us to it, guys. Is the Sorry. generator stuff done, though, Sips? So, like, you have a small, like, your safe pocket, kind of like Tarkov, but it can only fit so Oh, I'm, I'm very game. familiar with my safe pocket uh, lately. In fact, I went to urgent care on uh, Monday and had my safe pocket evaluated. Why was it just spraying out nonstop or what? Yeah, it was not as safe as uh, it normally is. Shit. What and was it, it? you know, what most pockets poisoning? keep stuff in them. <laughs> yes, Ryan this... wasn't keeping anything in there. <laughs> no, <laughs> all I'm gonna say is like, normally I'm not afraid to get gross uh, when I stream, and people are like, "Oh, I'm eating." I'm like, "Grow up." But I'm not gonna regale you with the story of me providing three stool samples this morning. Um, all I'm going to say is I think we need to disrupt this industry. We should not be having people do medical tests at home. And step one is cover your, lift your toilet seat and cover the bowl with saran wrap and then <laughs> close the lid. That's because this, it, it, I, don't, I don't even want to talk about it. Okay. But at, at 6.15, 6.30 this morning, that was, it was not a great, uh, it, it was not a great time to be me. Dude, do you have to drink that samples? stuff? No, I haven't had to do like a, a barium enema or or whatever yet, but you know I'm I'm ready for it now. Look at that. Put it in your butt. I've It'll I've oh you butt. know what? That's a good point. I should place it in my safe pocket. There you go. Yes. You should have plenty of room in there after three stool samples. Um, you'd be surprised, <laughs> honestly. It it seems to refill quite quickly. Oh no, I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay. It's, we'll figure out what it is. I honestly, I, I think I have like a tapeworm. But I saw you tweeting about man versus bee, and uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to say my kids have been watching it. I will and, never uh, give that show um, my limited time on planet Earth. No, well, listen, I had to because uh, we had uh, pizza, and it was like my wife's birthday and stuff, and they insisted on watching it, so we were watching it. And there's a part where a dog takes a cramp on the floor in the kitchen and he's trying to get in through like the dog hatch because the bee got back in the house <laughs> and uh, the dog bites him in the ass from the outside and he sort of like lunges back into the house and uh, his face, it just gets like smeared in like really gross dog shit while we wow. were eating. And normally I'm not like uh, squeamish or whatever, but I actually felt a bit sick while I was eating to see that. Really, that's the thing. Rowan Atkinson, he's always pushing the the boundaries of acceptable taste. Yeah, throughout throughout his career. I mean, you've seen in Mr. Bean, he he shoves his head up the turkey's uh, behind. Yeah, but he's true, always yeah. question. He's always forcing society to look at itself um, with his challenging comedy, and and I've always respected that. I didn't even. It's probably you were thinking about man versus bee. You were probably laughing so hard. Did you, you guys didn't want hear us that story? I wasn't. I wasn't muted for that. Yeah, no, I heard it. I, I heard, heard of the okay. dog poop. Yeah, that's All why right. I want you to watch Kenny versus Benny because one of the humiliations, um, Benny is in one of those big like human sized bubble ball thingies. Yeah. Uh, with a uh, with like a uh, dog turd or something, <laughs> and he's got to roll down a hill in a park in Toronto, and it's just like there's poop in there. It's but really... he's got to avoid all the dog turds. It's going funny, on. man. See, honestly, like, 
a month ago, I would have thought that was hilarious. Now it's a little too close to, to home <laughs> for me. Yeah. I, I mean, people could get really sick from that. I don't think they should just be doing that on TV. Have you considered, has what, this experience at all made you consider getting a bidet, Ryan? Um, honestly, the wiping is no longer Don't like, the problem. Don't you want to feel like some fresh, clean water sprayed directly up your ass? I wouldn't mind, but I mean, honestly, like the 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 area down there is very clean. That's not an issue. Yeah, but all that wiping, aren't you starting to chafe? No, I think I built up like a callus. Ah, butt callus. Yeah, Dude, that'd be a great band name. That would be a great band name, butt callus. They could be like a, a Maroon Five cover band. <laughs> Let's just like, cross the river. People with bidets are always like they're they're like um the way that people on Reddit feel about vegans. Mm. They're like, oh, how do you know someone has a bidet? Don't worry, just wait they'll five minutes, you. they'll tell you. Oh yeah. Dan is fighting Melania Trump. Um, it's true, honestly. And uh they they've been fighting for weeks. I'm starting to think they're in love. Dan literally just got Melania to one HP and died. Apparently. <laughs> That's what somebody just said. She was at one HP. How many times has he attempted it? It's like 2,000 something? Yeah, it's like almost 2,500 now. How many hours does he have in that game now? Like 300 and something. Three, 300 plus. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, I think my brother was saying he beat it like four times in like 100 <laughs> hours or something like that. No, maybe a bit more than that, but. Sips, you're lucky. Like your it's, wife's not a gamer. Yeah. Because my wife's. In oh chat. yeah, your wife is is a gamer, right? She's and she's better than me. So she's in in chat like uh, talking smack all the time about how bad I am and how I have three cups full of human feces in our fridge right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean that's fine, but my my wife just calls me like a nerd and like a dweeb and stuff like that. Or you are though spending all my time playing video games mm, true. and not. But what, pursuing... what's she doing? Well, she, shopping, sewing. Wow. Sorry for being Sex rude, but uh, the dishes. Uh, wow. And, <laughs> and, uh, no, I'm just joking. Not Ta playing. Taking games. care of of four <laughs> taking children. Taking care of all the kids. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's that one too. Yes. It's fair enough. Fair enough. Oh man. I just want to be clear. I love my wife. Yeah, me too. What the? Yeah, hell? I love your wife. I do too. <laughs> just if if she's listening to this right now, you're my num. You're my you're my ace of spades, baby. You're my number one. <laughs> <laughs> you're my moon and my stars. <laughs> I love I love my wife. I oh the moon. God! Don't be mad at me. How to get up there? You have some altered nickel. Get it, <laughs> dude? No, I, I don't even try to get it. I don't try to take anybody's loot. I it's respect. Loot? I respect the loot uh, priority queue. No, no, the, no. I just it I sips went... bypasses the priority all the time. Yeah, well, you know what? You know, he's a gamer. I'm a gamer. You know, you should take that nickel uh, to Nichols, the Celine Dion themed uh, Canadian diner chain. Celine Dion has her own diner. She, she had her own restaurant, yeah. That's crazy. Did you know? I, I would, thought it would have been popping in uh, near the Ottawa area. Yeah, I don't. Well, I don't recall. But, like, it depends what year it was as well. Because I moved it's in like the late 90s. Yeah, early 2000s. Uh, maybe then. Uh, I don't know. Used to be a great place to go for, uh, for a nice family meal. You know, maybe it's your grandpa's, like, 64th birthday. Let's go to Nichols real quick. Have a Celine Dion burger and uh... Nichols. Oh, maybe I do remember Nichols actually. I didn't realize that it had anything to do with um, Celine Dion. Yeah, have have some uh, filet Dion. Filet Dion. <laughs> Celine Mignon. Filet Dion. Celine Mignon, such a good joke. Thanks, I stole it from a chatter without giving them any attribution whatsoever. I love doing that. Dude, it feels so damn good. Do you ever do that thing where you steal the joke and then you look back at the chat just to make sure they're not calling you out on yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I do that a lot too. And then if they call me out, I say great minds think alike. But really, I, I get just, them banned. I stole it. I send, a, I send a, uh, a, a private message to a moderator and I say ban them. <laughs> and if they ask why, I just say, oh... I don't know. I'm just feeling really saucy today. You know what you did. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
In what world is it clickbait that I put cycling, Canadian cycling in the title? You hey, might, you, yeah. Only Maybe they people thought it was from like a tour the, to France. Well, that's the thing, though. But that's not clickbait. That's like anti-clickbait, unless you're from the Netherlands. It's just fun. Yeah. People I from the, the Netherlands thing. be like, oh, you tricked dozens of us into showing up for some pog cycling. But actually, it's just a game where you shoot guns. It's the game's literally called The Cycle. Exactly. We're cycling. What do you guys think of the name The Cycle Frontier for a video game? I don't really get it. Find it uh, a little generic? It might be their downfall, to be honest. Yeah. I just don't understand what it what it is. like. The Cycle is... Uh, Loot, shoot, and scoot, and then repeat. That's the same. And then the frontier is what this planet that we're on, Fortuna Three. Mm -hmm. It might be one of the least inspired names for a game. Like it, every just, single word yeah. in the title means absolutely nothing. They're trying too hard to make it sound like like a Star Trek thing. Well, it's like a, so the last game, or maybe not the last game, but one of the games that this company made also had a generic title. It was called Spec Ops: The Line. Spec Ops, okay, oh, yeah. I kind of get it. It's, uh, you know, special forces. What the hell does the line mean? Because once you cross like the, that like line, the, man. Like the thin blue line? The thin red line. I think it might be the thin camo line for this one. There is a line. Once you cross it, once you take a life, there's no going back. Well, that's kind of like where the, what they do in the story, I guess. So they do... They, I, I know a lot of people love Spec Ops The Line. I kind of like... Uh, uh, I, I never, I, I found it a little bit steeped in artifice because they do this thing where they're like, hey, there's enemies over there. Uh, shoot them, shoot them. Use the white phosphorus grenades. And then you like, you know, light them up with the white phosphorus grenades. And they're like, what the hell? Those were innocents. You didn't have to do that. And I'm like, you wouldn't let me progress unless I did it. Like they, they actually gaslight you. They're like, you, you Quick, uh, I see them getting a shoulder-mounted rocket launcher. Wipe them out. And then you, like, you know, kill them. And then he's like, why did you do that? That was just a family trying to escape. He was in a wheelchair, you <laughs> monster. <laughs> You're sick. You're sick. <laughs> Fuck you. Tell me about the safe pocket. Well, it's like, imagine Malph was in prison. Yeah. And I had to bust him out by smuggling in a nail file that the guards would not find doing a cursory pat down. Where would you put it? Inside your safe pocket. Inside your safe pocket. Yeah, everyone's got one. Shoot, that's very insensitive to those of us who were born without buttholes. Okay? How did you get yours? I don't know how I lost health. I, I made my own. I, mine's handcrafted. Dude, that's messed Have you up. ever seen Squid Game where um, the main character in the second challenge uses his tongue to... Uh, break the umbrella out of its case. The other thing that's nice about this game is how you can fall more than two feet without uh, breaking both of your legs and your guy for the rest of the mission goes, ah! Ah! And then you gotta pump them full of steroids and stuff. Pop like every pill in your in your backpack at the same time. Please ask Anna about the questions the doctor asked him on Monday. Okay, well, like, I, I would get that thing out of my face, Sorry. by the way. Look at that thing. is It's enormous. It's a trench gun, baby doll. <laughs> um, so, basically, this is the doctor ordered a blood test. And he said, like, um, usually when we do a blood test, we put other... Uh, we, regardless of what we're testing for, we usually do, like, an STI screening. Is that okay? And I was like, sure, no problem. Um, like, I don't think you're going to find anything. But at the same time, like, if, it's, if that's common procedure, then why not? And then he said, um, we could also add in a screening for rectal gonorrhea. And I, he didn't mention this, but I thought that that was another routine thing that they did. So I said, sure, go ahead. And then he said, normally we would only recommend this for somebody that has receptive anal sex. So do you mind if I ask if you have receptive anal sex? And then there was like 15 seconds where I couldn't figure out what the sentence meant. I was like, receptive anal sex. Like, what does it matter if it's receptive versus, like, begrudging or, um, you know, dutiful or reluctant, <laughs> you know? Like, and then I realized he was asking me if I received. If and, I received. Yes. 
And then I said, no, we don't, I, I don't do that, so we don't need to take that test. And he said, oh, okay. This, it was a very awkward encounter. Uh, also, halfway through my doctor visit, he did say, do I detect a hint of an accent? And I said, <laughs> I, said um, I don't think so. No, oh, my just, legs. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. You should have done the test and pulled the stifler and asked him to use three fingers instead of. Where two. are you guys? Terrible. Oh, dude, I forgot. To, so we were in Washington uh, State at our in-laws' place this weekend. It's a, like a pretty small town. I don't know, like five or ten thousand people. Um, and we were out uh, taking the baby for a walk so she could nap. So we asked our in-laws and our nieces, "Hey, do you want anything from Starbucks?" They send us the order. It's like four frappuccinos and a bunch of cake pops. Okay, whatever. That's a lot of that's a lot of calories, man. What? what they're like nine. They can they burn like five thousand calories a day. Frappuccino. Like, Isn't there like coffee and all though? That, dude, I don't know. It's fine. Okay, this, this is secondary to the story. So like, well, I was waiting for the frappuccinos to come out, and there was a like a seventy year old guy standing right next to me. And like the first Frappuccino came out, I put it in the holder. He did, he had no reaction. The second Frappuccino came out, he started chuckling to himself. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> then the third Frappuccino came out and he was like, whoa. <laughs> and then the fourth Frappuccino came out and he freaking lost it. He was like laughing to himself and like almost slapping his knee and stuff like that. And then he, he turned to me and said, that's a lot of Frappuccinos. And I said, yes, it is. And then I, yes. I just walked out of this. I, I feel like that's how you know you're in a small town. Uh, you can make someone's day just by ordering four drinks at Starbucks. <laughs> four Frappuccinos. There, it, it, like, he probably went home and told his wife that story. Like, you're not going to believe what I saw today. Or Frappuccinos. Some, some city slicker from... Canada Some came in slicker. and had <laughs> four frappuccinos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Actually fit on you. All right. Well, I think I'm I'm going to bounce for now. You got enough? I think I got enough for now. That, okay. I, Sips, you hear this tone? That means he's literally never going to play this game. I mean, I was Which just, is fine. just wondering. Oh, are you out? Yeah. I, I, I gave it you, a you, shot. I think on it, there's no, a couple it, things here. Fine. One of those, it's, it's like it's too much game for me. For sure. Right. Like, there's just way too much shit going on. I don't know what consultants tell the companies. You got to have this much game in your game. It's madness. Just wandering through the woods for, you know, half an hour, then getting shot twice and dying. And now I just cast a healing spell on your b-hole. It should start to take effect soon. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I'll take what I can get at this point, to be honest with you. If you could maybe cast another one, like, on my large intestine, because I don't think it's really like the hole where there's a problem. I think it's the I think it's the large intestine that could use some support, quite frankly. Dude, I could go for a blooming onion right now. The crazy thing, so if you WebMD the symptoms that I've been having, I apologize for talking about this. Trust me, I would rather not be talking about this, but this is my life right now. Then every disease that they try to diagnose you with on WebMD has the same symptom, loss of appetite. I have uh, the craziest appetite I've ever had in my entire life. I feel like I could eat an entire large pizza like three times a day, um, I, which is what makes me think that I honestly have like a, like a 25 foot long tapeworm inside of my body or something like that. Like I'm so hungry all the time. I've started having like psychotic midnight snacks. Like last night before bed, I made toast. Then I put uh, shredded cheese on top of the toast and microwaved it for 20 seconds. It's like the worst grilled cheese I've ever had in my entire life. It was like a kitchen nightmares grilled cheese. It was one of the best things I've ever eaten, but only because of the circumstances. I am thinking like, how funny would it be if after all, all the shit we've been through, if I uh, end up being diagnosed with a tapeworm and then they give me ivermectin. I don't even know, like, I think I would just have to die. I don't think I could bring myself to take it at this point. But it, it would be a hilarious uh, prognosis for sure. No doubt about it. I've been having the most fucked up dreams too. Like I, I dream um, like last night, but but pretty much every night, all I dream is that I'm looking after my daughter, and I'm going like, 
Where is she? I gotta keep an eye on her. I gotta keep an eye on her at like all times. And then I'm like, oh no, I haven't seen her for like 15 minutes. Uh, where is she? Is she lost? And then I wake up and I'm like, she's not lost. She's asleep. <laughs> and then I fall asleep and I have the same dream over and over. But even like in the dream, I know that I'm in bed. And I'm like, it's a, even if I'm in bed, I've got to keep an eye on her because who knows where she is. And then I'm like, my awake mind comes to the surface for like a minute and is like, you're fine. She's in her crib right now and you're sleeping. And I'm like, oh, okay. Where is she? It's crazy. Your tapeworm's trying to get you to be a good dad. Honestly, plus two for the tapeworm. I respect a parasite that also improves your fatherly abilities. I will say, I haven't had my recurring dream uh, about waking up on an airplane to South Korea, realizing I signed the contract to teach English for 12 months and knowing that I'm locked in for one calendar year. I haven't had that. I used to have that dream about once a month. Now I, I probably gone like six months without having that dream. Maybe I've finally buried the trauma of, of my year abroad successfully. I don't know. What did you name your tapeworm? I mean, honestly, I feel like I got to call my tapeworm like Domino or something like that. Because he's got me craving pizza like crazy. Anytime I get the choice, I mean, like, to be honest, so I went to the urgent care, right? They were like, mm, it's probably going to be like an hour and a half till the doctor sees you. We'll send you a text. I went, and keep in mind, I have gastrointestinal issues. That's why I'm at the urgent care. I went across the street and ate like a, a pizza that was just barely large enough for like one person to feel okay eating it. I would not describe it as a personal pizza. I would describe it as um, like probably two people would be better off splitting it. But I just man moded that shit. And I was like, that's it, it, honestly afterwards I was full, but I wasn't like disgusted with myself. I was like, I needed that. You see, there you go. Maybe we'll call it Little Caesar. Like my appetite is insane right now. There were two of you eating it though. You and Little Caesar. I guess that's true. Is it true that to remove a tapeworm, they just hold food outside of your butt and wait for the worm to poke his head out? I do not think that that's true. That can't possibly be the, the way that you treat a tapeworm. There's no way that it is. It actually is. Come on, man. There's no way. And then they yank it out. I'm a doctor is true. You guys are actually, you're totally lying to me. You tell they don't just give you like a, a dewormer, like a veterinary dewormer or something like that. No, they do not put a mouse trap on your ass. Come on. This is not a joke. This is my life, okay? I can't make it past the hammers. Whoa! If it's actually a worm, can you take a photo of it on Twitter? Well, sure, if they do the thing where they play the clarinet right next to my butthole until it gets charmed and it comes out, then I would. I would take a photo of it for sure, but if it's a tapeworm, I'm pretty sure they're just gonna give me some pills and then like, I'm gonna crap it out amongst all the other detritus that I've been excising from my body lately. Dude, yeah, don't, don't they just use that gun from the Matrix where they see the tapeworm like crawling around in your stomach and then they isolate it with that weird claw gun? I'd say acceptable path so far. I'm not worried about low grav. I'm not worried about low grav in the slightest. I love that for me. That seemed amazing. Can I make it on the first cycle? I don't think so. I'm insane. I'm I'm the best to ever play Fall Guys. That was so easy. <laughs> He's back, baby. Thank you, little Caesar. High five. I'm gonna make a tweet. Hello. Let's just say hello. I'm playing Fall Guys. I gotta, I gotta pump the analytics a little bit after playing the cycle frontier. I gotta let people know, hey, I'm playing basic games again. I thought that those games for adults, people that hold PhDs in engineering, I'm not touching that shit anymore, okay? I'm back to playing stuff where you could just turn it on and it's like Coco Melon for adults. With Little Caesar. Gaming with Little Caesar? Honestly, this seems like the kind of title that if the corporation was paying attention to Twitch, I could easily get sued. 
I love this comment. Dan beat Melania. No reaction whatsoever. No reaction. No reaction. Ten seconds later, I got you. <laughs> oh man, you should have seen your face. Got him. Like Frasier is a very droll show. They always be like the the dad's always like, "Hey Niles, how was your dinner party?" And then Niles is like, "Oh, father, it's the worst thing I've ever been to in my entire life." Uh, all the couples got into a fight, and then one of them got divorced right in front of us. And he goes, the dad goes, that sounds terrible. And then Niles goes, that's nothing. They also served red wine with fish. And then the laugh track goes, <laughs> Oh, man. You can't serve red wine with fish, apparently. I didn't know that. Don't do that. Everyone I... Because this is what was just said in chat. Everyone I've ever met who likes Frasier is a bigot. I like Frasier. I don't think I'm a bigot. You can like the show without... I mean, Kelsey Grammer himself has expressed some opinions I don't agree with. That doesn't mean uh, that Frasier itself is uh, like a red flag. I mean, Duck Dynasty? Sure, maybe. Frasier is just like a sitcom. It doesn't have that kind of power. You see, he's not the Scarlet Witch. He's literally just like a radio host. I know no one who likes Frasier. It won like nine Emmys in a row. It won best primetime comedy like from 1993 until 2002. What the hell? Is okay, sorry. Fraser? <laughs> How do you call it? It's Frasier, right? Frasier. It's not Fraser. Frasier? I'm 24, what the hell is Frasier? I don't know how to describe it to you because the concept of a modern sitcom doesn't really exist anymore. They've all been turned into like The Office knockoffs, like Parks and Rec and Modern Family and Superstore, okay? My parents like Frasier, they're a little bit racist. Yeah, your parents probably also like rotisserie chickens from Costco. That doesn't mean that everybody who eats rotisserie chickens from Costco is racist. Frasier was a very likable show. It cast a wide umbrella. It brought people together. Some people were laughing at Frasier because they're like, this show is droll. Some people were laughing at Frasier because they're like, these people are snobs, lol. No, I'm not gonna do a viewer lobby. And the reason is, it's not because I hate my viewers. That's just simply, uh, that's ancillary. I prefer to play the Fall Guys uh, randoms because I actually think that they're worse. I, I think the average Fall Guys player is a lot worse than my average viewer is at Fall Guys. Because I see you typing in chat. Oh, I have a PhD in computer science. Oh, I have a, a master's degree in chemical engineering. I don't want to go up against you in anything. You got the dedication and the credentials. I want to play against like, you know, four-year-olds, basically. Have you seen the 16X size Taco Bell Cheez-It? Hold on. 16X size Taco Bell Cheez-It tostada? That might kill your tapeworm. I've never eaten at Taco Bell, as I say, once every like two months, but um, I might make an exception for a 16X Cheez-It Taco Bell tostada. There were tapeworms in the chat. Dude, maybe it is other tape. Other people out there are probably infected with a tapeworm and the tapeworm is like getting them to type stuff that would make me eat something that would make my tapeworm grow. Like, you don't even realize why you're typing it, but you're like, you know, eat a whole stick of butter. Hey, you know what would really help you is if you ate like a whole stick of butter right now. You got the tapeworm psychology, man. You know what, you got me thinking. I've watched a lot of Adam Sandler movies over the past two years. Definitely Happy Gilmore, definitely Billy Madison, Hubie Halloween, um, The Hustle. I watched Uncut Gems again a couple months ago. Maybe I should watch Big Daddy. I kind of, Big Daddy was like the first Adam Sandler movie I was not that into as a kid. Because I was like, he's not even crapping his pants or anything. Can we talk about the Big Daddy NYC apartment? Is it one of those things where he works like, you know, part time as a cashier at the, like the local arena or something like that. But he lives in a 2000 square foot exposed brick condo in downtown Manhattan. He's a toll booth operator and he has a sick loft. I kind of remember the, the loft. He has a part-time job because he sued the city of New York for getting his foot run over. 
Hey man, that was in like 1998, right? I don't know. That was before things got really crazy, I guess. I was, so someone said, how do you feel about Jack and Jill? I actually read a comment about Jack and Jill last night that tickled my fancy. Did you know that um, in one of the seasons of Survivor in the 2010s, the reward challenge reward was uh, getting to see Jack and Jill, the Adam Sandler movie where he plays both Jack and Jill. And then the, the comment that I read, it was on Reddit. It wasn't even on the Survivor Reddit, but it was, it was on like r slash movies. It was like many of the castaways from that season described it as the worst movie they've ever seen in their entire lives. But I guess like even if you're on Survivor, getting the chance to watch a movie, even if the movie is kind of like pure ass, it probably feels pretty good compared to what you've been going through. Do you like 50 first dates? I feel like it's pretty okay. I mean, I, it's one of like the last in that like silver age Adam Sandler era. Like, I don't know how long the golden age is. I'm pretty sure it's just Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore. And then there's like 50 first dates, The Water Boy, Little Nicky, Big Daddy. Those are in like the silver age and then all those movies he did with Jennifer Aniston. Mr. Deeds of his Silver Age as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe Click. Wedding Singer, I forgot. Wedding Singer's great. Thanks for telling me about the Wedding Singer. That's some information that would have been useful to me yesterday. Come on, I know everybody's like Paul Thomas Anderson pilled, but like that does, that's not an Adam Sandler movie. When I say Adam Sandler movie, I mean that he wrote it, he directed, he, uh, directed it, he cast it with all of his friends in it. Uncut Gems is incredible, man. That, it, that, that movie, for me, it's almost, I mean, I'm not saying we can't get along if you don't like it, because I know it was divisive. But for me, it's like a litmus test to see if we have similar taste. If you liked Uncut Gems, we may have similar taste. If you, if you thought Uncut Gems was, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, but maybe not for you. That's fine too. If you say something insane, like why would I just couldn't handle it? They were swearing so much. Why was there so much swearing? Then I'm stupid. I'm actually just dumb. I'm actually an idiot. Uncut Gems is good, but it's the only movie you overrate more than The Lobster. I mean, I, I don't see... For, my brain does not work in a way that you could watch a movie as idiosyncratic as The Lobster and not think that it's either like a one or a nine. If you watch The Lobster and you were like, well, that was unremarkable. I don't know, it was like a six and a half. Then I think we don't have the same brain. It's a seven, it's a bit pretentious. Here's, here's something that, and again, I'm not a professional critic. Uh, I don't think pretentious is a valid criticism. I think you have to back that up with some supporting arguments. Why is something bad just because it's pretentious? But because it annoys you? Well, that, that sounds like a problem with you more than a problem with the movie, personally. It insists upon itself. So true. What this movie presupposes is that if Colin Farrell doesn't find a spouse within a month, he'll be turned into a lobster. What this book suggests is, what if he doesn't? Big Daddy's the start of, of Adam Sandler's slump. I thought Big Daddy was like well liked by critics, but not that well liked by the audience. Wait, but you criticize movies for being pretentious all the time, i.e. Schenectady, New York. Okay, but that like the lobster is pretentious. Schenectady, New York is fucking pretentious, man. Like, I, if you're a levy, I think that mostly because it's my opinion. I don't see any intellectual dishonesty or cognitive dissonance but with having that take. I think that I, I can still sleep at night and feel good about myself. I don't think we're making it here, by the way. Seven people have already made it. Don't climb, dude. The climbing is what kills you. We made it? Holy cow. By the way, you can't hate me, because I know that everybody's like, oh, you, you don't like to see movies in theaters unless they're by Marvel. Um, I saw Schenectady, New York in theaters, by the way, in my little art house theater in the town where I went to college. How much did you contribute to the Schenectady, New York box office gross? Oh, you downloaded it off the Pirate Bay like a scumbag? And yet you spend all your life uh, posting online about how much you love art? Yeah, okay. Curious. 
you criticize society and yet you take part in it. Hmm, I just think that's interesting. You got me there. I love art, dude. I love movies. That's why I refuse to fiscally support them at all. Who are you arguing with? Mostly myself, I think. Most, mostly just myself. By the way, I do have to tell you, I know everyone's been suggesting I need to see everything everywhere all at once. I got a text from my mom yesterday that said me and my, your father just saw an amazing movie at the local movie theater. And I said, oh, what was it? And she said everything everywhere all at once. The movie is, is a cross demographic smash audience hit. Everybody loves it. Mothers, farmers, farmers' moms. I do have to see it. Any chances showing up on uh, Netflix soon? No, wait, it's not a cooking show. Can your movie brain prove me wrong that everything Jamie Lee Curtis does is pogged up? You know, Jamie Lee Curtis, she's, she's got a sleeper hit filmography. Original Halloween, Fish Called Wanda is hilarious. Freaky Friday is fine. Like, it's not a... Oh, that's right. Wait, she's Tim Allen's wife in um, in Christmas with the Cranks, which is truly horrendous. True Lies is is pretty okay. Activia commercials. She she crushes it in the Activia commercials, man. It makes me cry every time. Knives Out. She's good in Knives Out. Can I say something, though? I feel like, and maybe this is deserved, but when you're like an old, established actor or actress, I think that you are just like, you no longer have to act. You just have to like be in the movie and then you can, you're coasting off of your earlier career. Like there's, an, maybe not in like an Oscar bait movie, but in a, in a movie that's like, you know, an action movie or a comedy or something like that, just you being in the movie is, cause you're not in the movie as a character in, anymore. You're in the movie so that people watching at home go like, Oh, holy shit, that's Jamie Lee Curtis. I love her. Oh, holy cow, that's uh, Robert De Niro. He was so good in Taxi Driver 50 years ago. And uh, Dirty Grandpa, like eight years ago. Wow, is that Dean Cain? <laughs> what the hell? This movie is Dean Cain, James Woods, and Kevin Sorbo. What the hell am I watching, man? Miyazaki, let me out of the car. I don't want to go to the movie theater. Wow, is that Al Pacino from Jack and Jill? I'm such a big fan of his music and his acting. I need your thoughts on the 2005 film uh, Monster-in-Law. Uh, uh, the movie where uh, Jennifer Lopez is getting married and uh, she meets her mother-in-law for the first time as played in a glorious return to acting form by Jane Fonda, who of course maybe is most famous for her uh, protesting, but also was um, the lead character in the sci-fi film Barbarella. Only she finds out her mother-in-law is more like a monster-in-law. I've never seen it. I've never seen the movie. You had to watch it on a Greyhound bus. That seems like one of the, like a Greyhound bus classic, which is very weird because I also saw another Jennifer Lopez uh, movie on a Greyhound bus. On a bus trip to New York from my hometown, they made us watch Made in Manhattan, the movie where Jennifer Lopez is part of the hospitality staff at a Manhattan hotel, but then she fulfills her dreams and marries a rich guy who stayed in her hotel. What a classic, aspirational tale for all the, the young uh, women out there. Inspiring. If you give it your all, you too could marry a wealthy patron of the business that you happen to work at. Oh, come off it. It's, it's just fun. It's just a fun movie. What about the 2009 banger Bride Wars? Okay, so I did not get to uh, see Bride Wars. I believe that that's Kate Hudson and Anne Hathaway. There was a real era, like a Bridezilla era of, um, of cinema. But on that same bus trip, we did watch another movie that takes place in New York that has to deal with brides. It's called 27 Dresses. It stars James Marsden and, uh, and Katherine Heigl. The premise of the movie is that Katherine Heigl has been to 27 weddings as a bridesmaid, has never been married herself. What a sad story. She has 27 close friends. Oh, 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 life is so hard. It's so tragic that she's been an integral part of 27 weddings for her incredibly robust social circle, but hasn't yet been married herself. And here's the twist. She's like 
28 years old. Shit makes me sick. 27 Dresses is my friend's favorite movie. Oh, it's my best friend's movie. Best friend's favorite movie. Okay, okay. I mean, Josh's brother's favorite movie is Norbit. So like, and he's just a, like a guy. So I'm not necessarily judging, I'm just saying. One of the other things that bothers me, I mean, it's just, it's so artificial, right? But the, in 27 Dresses, James Marsden and Katherine Heigl bond over their mutual love of the song Benny and the Jets by Elton John. Which just strikes me as one of those things where it's like, oh, you've, you've been to 27 weddings? and you haven't uh, found anybody yet that likes one of the most popular songs ever written, um, sung by one of the most popular living artists of our time. Like, it took you that long to, to find somebody who likes Benny and the Jets? Just seems surprising to me. I have watched the John Hamm movie Tag. I mean, so Tag and Game Night are kind of like the, the comedy version of Armageddon and Deep Impact. My take has been that, you know, Tag is like a, a, a six. I think it's reasonably fun. Maybe like a five. I don't know. But Game Night is like an eight. Game Night is like an underrated neo-comedy classic. Did you, is that true? Did Jeremy Renner say he would not be in Infinity War because he was filming Tag? Because he, he really, I, if I remember correctly, he does not show up at all until Endgame where he says, don't give me hope. Some fruit. Count the fruit, avoid the rising slime. When the screens show the quantity of a type of fruit, stand on the tile matching that fruit to survive. What's happening? Three coconuts. Holy cow. You guys are crazy. What? <laughs> Am I stupid? What happened? It said two. It, it, it said three. It did not say three. I, the screen to me, I swear to you, in my brain, whatever I saw, I interpreted it as a three. You read the countdown timer? Oh my god! This system's design is why, like, one in six airplanes crashed until, like, the 1980s. You gotta... Maybe, like, could, maybe you could use, like, a Roman numeral or something for the countdown, or just, like, a graphic of, like, a clock ticking down? Anyway. What are your thoughts on Hereditary? It's like an incredible horror movie. It's an unbelievable uh, horror movie. It's Kino. It's amazing. Midsummer is better. So I, I don't think that's the popular take. I actually agree. But I think both of... I mean, I, I would give both of them a 10, honestly. I mean, I just gave Game Night an 8. So I don't feel that uncomfortable stretching the scale a little bit. I like them both. I watched half of Hereditary, thought it was so bad. You might want to... I would say that's one worth finishing. And I say that not really thinking that you're going to finish it and be like, it's amazing. But you should finish it because you're probably going to hate it even more at the end. I feel like people who don't vibe with Hereditary particularly get annoyed at the ending. So if you want to have a strong reaction, you might as well invest like the extra hour to finish that shit off. And then find like some like-minded individuals on... Uh, the IMDB forums. I mean, like, this movie was just so weird. Just so weird. I mean, I'm not saying it was... I Like, I get what they were going for, but it was just so weird. They were definitely high on pot noose when they made this movie. It's kind of pretentious, too. Okay, then go back to watching Doolittle. I'm sick of this, oh, it's pretentious. What, so every movie has to be, like, John Wick 1. This, this shit is getting crazy. A movie can't try to be art house. It just has to back into it accidentally. John Wick is pretentious? No, John Wick 3 is pretentious. And I love it, by the way. I think I love pretentious movies. John Wick 3 is pretentious because it starts to get into like the... Anytime they get into a problem, they just hand wave it away by giving six golden pirate coins to somebody and then they go, very good, Mr. Wick. This will cost you one pocket full of doubloons. Are you sure you're willing to pay that? This will invoke the sigil of Tarasis. Are you are you sure you that's a step you're willing to take, Jonathan? I don't have a choice. Very good, Mr. Wick. Sleep well. Hereditary is literally just paranormal activity for people who don't like found footage films. 
Apocalypse Now is literally just Kramer versus Kramer for people that are scared of divorce. You see, I can just make shit up too. The Godfather is literally just 2001 A Space Odyssey for people who love the Mafia. Anyone can construct the sentence, okay? You're not special. For your information, it's not that I don't like found footage films, it's that they make me throw up. So please don't make fun of my affliction, please. If I, I would ask you politely, if you regress The Godfather to the mean, it's really just an average movie. I mean, dude, honestly, if you regress The Godfather and The Godfather 2 to the mean, they're actually the most average movies of all time. Norbit is literally Casablanca for people who love turkey ass. Honestly, you, did you take that out of Roger Ebert's review at the time? That sounds very erudite. I was laughing because I found myself on r slash Bellingham again last night. I was reading about, um, there, 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 of course, he, if you scroll down r slash Bellingham for uh, more than 30 seconds, you're guaranteed to see a thread complaining about driving. But this one was said, um, hey, is it just me or are Bellingham drivers really bad? It was downvoted heavily. Um, I guess Bellingham uh, citizens don't like having their driving criticized, which is interesting because they love criticizing others dri uh, when they drive, especially if they have uh, Canadian license plates. Anyway, I was laughing because Someone left a reply that was like, so true, drivers in Western Washington are so bad. I'm usually in the left lane doing 20 miles an hour over the speed limit and I get stuck behind people all the time. Get out of the way, we have places to go. I'm from the East Coast and that's just how we drive over there. And then like one reply just ate him alive. It was like, you know, people from the East Coast don't have a monopoly on uh, having places to go. And I was like, you know what? That's so true. I don't know if that's actually a stereotype. Like if that's something that people from the East Coast do a lot. Dude, on the West Coast, everyone just has like a more leisurely uh, pace to their life. It's crazy. I'm from uh, Ann Arbor. And in Ann Arbor, everybody's busy all the time. People are constantly always doing something in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I guess it's technically not the East Coast, but you get the idea. Why the shots in Michigan? I, I'm taking shots at everybody, okay? Bellingham, Michigan, Coquitlam. It's because West, West Coasters have three extra hours in the day. Boom. Take shots in Nebraska? I don't even know, like, what Nebraska is. I'm actually a little upset. The most recent thing that we said about Nebraska was when I was watching 90 Day Fiance like three years ago, I was like, Nebraska's beautiful, there's mountains everywhere. And then people were like, that's not what, Nebraska's actually like one of the flattest states in the union. And I was just thinking back to the, like on 90 Day Fiance, they were surrounded by like snow peaked mountains, 360 degrees. And I, I, it was the first time I realized that TLC would lie to me. How dare they? It's got bluffs. Isn't a bluff like just a, it's like a small mountain. Yes. Okay, well then that's fine. The bluffs aren't even in Nebraska, they're in Iowa. What the hell is a bluff, man? Also, what the hell is this? Hungry, hungry rhinos? I'm from Utah if you want mountains. I mean, if we were ranking states by natural beauty, what I've seen of Utah in all those Church of Latter-day Saints Netflix documentaries definitely looks gorgeous. Colorado, Montana, the Dakotas. It's got some beautiful stuff for sure. Was I mean, Washington and Oregon, you know, as well, without a doubt. Alaska, I, I, I imagine for sure. You ever see South Cincinnati? You haven't lived until you've seen downtown Cincinnati during the Chili Bowl, man. I know, I know. People like to rag on Cincinnati, but I'm telling you, the city really comes alive during the Chili Bowl. I'm insane. You know what this is? This is like when you're walking around downtown and you see someone just going like, ah, like Monka Giga featuring Robert Downey Jr. And you just position yourself in the crowd in such a way that if it pops off, you're not gonna be the target number one. I got a lot of practice with that one. 